Hi friends, this is Kara, and um, I am your Amico Brent um, um, answer person for the 5-6 exchange. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about the, the newest glazes. We have um, just released five new glazes, and they are on distributor shelves now. And the one that uh, I wanted to talk about today, because a few people have been having some difficulties, is PC71 Flambe. And uh, this is one of our copper reds. The uh, uh, PC70 is copper red, gives a beautiful ox blood. Flambe is more of a purple to blue copper red. Um, so, uh, one of the things about these is they are actually real copper reds. They are creating a localized reduction in the glaze. And to get that localized reduction, you need to have a really thick application. So, um, the glazes, when you open them, you will notice that they're pretty thick. Let's see if I can show you that. It's kind of hard to see. Um, they're almost like really thick yogurt. And that's how they're supposed to be. Do not thin them. Um, do not add water to these. It will create problems. So before I get into the actual application, I'm going to talk a little bit about brushes. So you saw the brush that I used there, which is a larger version of this, which is one of our Amico fan brushes. These are natural fibers. That means it did come from an animal. But I have found from testing, from using different brushes, that um, the natural fibers make a big difference in how much glaze goes on the wear. So a synthetic fiber like this one, it doesn't hold very much glaze and uh, releases the glaze very quickly. So you get kind of a blotchy effect. Uh, a lot of um, paint brushes uh, are actually synthetic and they uh, the same problem. A brush like this with shorter bristles, you're going to get a very patchy kind of uh, result. Chip brushes are cheap, longer bristles, but again, you, you don't get the best results. They're good for, for brushing on paint, but glaze, unfortunately, is not like paint. So I prefer the fan brushes with natural fibers, or if you can, um, get hake brushes, which are meant specifically for applying glaze. They're fantastic. So I'm unfortunately not going to be able to see any questions that you might post on the live um, uh, video until after I stop, so I will answer them. This is part one of our video uh, series for flambe because we have to let the glaze dry in between coats. And I didn't think that anybody wanted to sit here and, you know, just listen to me yammer for 20 minutes. So um, I have my vase. I've already applied glaze on the inside. I just put a clear glaze on the inside. And it's just a very simple, ba very simple vase. I'd like to point out the foot. So one of the things that I do to uh, keep glazes from running too much is to trim a sharp angle in the foot. Uh, it helps to slow down the glaze. So for example, this is a cup that is applied three coats of flambe. And you can see it has a sharp angled foot and the glaze kind of stops when it gets there. Uh, and it does not run all the way down. I did give it a little bit of space, but the angle is what slows it down. This is three coats of flambe, uh, fired cone six, and this is straight out of this jar. So this is one of the production jars that has just been made in, in June. So this is what is on your shelves <clears throat> right now in your distributors uh, stores. And you can see how at cone six, it is a beautiful purple with some blue highlights. 
So now to get on to actually glazing. So I just hold my piece by the foot. Let me put this right in the middle so you guys can see better. And I really load up my brush. There's a lot of glaze on here. And I tend to turn the piece as I apply the glaze. And you'll notice I reload my brush. I want to get as even a coat as possible. This glaze is very sensitive to thick and thin areas. So if you're getting it on too thin in one area, you're going to have some burned out spots. And you can see, I just kind of slather it on like frosting. The fan brush helps to keep the coats as even as possible. And that is one coat. You'll notice how I did go back over areas. I don't, uh, I don't count those as extra coats. That is, that is one application coat right there. And I'll just leave my brush right there. And I'll be back in just a few minutes to finish up. I did want to show you, this is cone six. This is one coat of flambe applied the way I have here. So if you're thinking that you like got a lot on there and it's really, really thick, for the flambe it's just not going to be thick enough. So that, if you're getting a clear result, it's probably not enough. This is two of those really thick kind of coats. And this is three coats. And you can see that's on a flat tile. You can see how it breaks along the edges, so if you have texture, it is going to go clear where there's texture. It'll get the purple where, it's, where the uh, piece is flat or it has some space to run. So if you have some questions, drop them in the comments. I'm going to be back at 1230 and I'll do another coat. So I'd, I hope you come back and if you have questions about how I've applied things, oh almost forgot one of my favorite tricks to keep track of how many coats I've put down. This is a washable surface. If I was on a surface that was hard to wash, I would have a paper towel. But I just do a hatch mark that tells me this is one coat. When I come back and do the second coat, I'll do a second hatch mark. So that way I'm not going to accidentally put five coats on when I meant three. And I'm not going to think, oh, have I done enough when it was only two. So, I hope to see you at 1230.